Blow the trumpet, sound the alarm, it's time for the clarion call. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Clarion Call broadcast. I'm your host, Mr. Jonathan Simmons, and we thank God for all of those of you who have decided to tune in and join us this morning. We thank God here in Atlanta. It is a beautiful, crisp spring morning, uh, high 60s, supposed to be heading up until 80 degrees today, but uh, we thank God uh, for just having us to be alive and well on another day. I don't care if it was raining outside, snowing outside. The bottom line is is that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall, we will be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, We're going to be joined uh, in just a little bit by our tag team partner, as they say on ESPN, uh, my good sister and friend, April Lalanne Sentmanot. Of course, each and every week she brings to you the motivational moments, and we thank God for her and her ministry, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to having her bring the motivational moments. And then in the second half, I'll be talking to you about the uh, a subject. It's simply called the pursuit of perfection, the pursuit of perfection and how uh, sometimes we get so caught up uh, in trying to be perfect that we sometimes lose the passion uh, and the purpose of following the will of God. So that will be my inspirational um, moment for today. So uh, we thank God again for those of you who are joining us. We thank God for WIGO, Atlanta's incredible radio station. For those of you who might have been hiding in a cave, uh, the station was, in fact, nominated for a stellar award, the very first time uh, in Atlanta. An AM station, I believe, was nominated for that award. So we thank God for Larry Young, our GM, and our program director, Mr. Kevin Buchanan, for their hard work um, behind the scenes. Well, we're going to try to get a little bit of uh, motivational music, as we always do, and then we'll look forward to the call-in from my sister, April Lance Sentmanot. And remember, you would be incomplete without the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, have you ever heard a symphony? You feel the music racing through your veins. But imagine it without the strings. Uh, what would it be? Suit you off your feet. Now imagine you without the beat. What would it be? Incomplete. That was me.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God that we are not incomplete because we have been born again and we are filled with the Holy Ghost and we are complete in Christ Jesus. Of course, uh, this program would not be complete unless we had motivational moments from my good friend and sister, April Alain Sentmanot, and she is such a trooper, even though she could not be in the studio, she has called in. So we're going to go now to motivational moments from the Spiritual Soldier. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Motivational Moments with the Spiritual Soldier, your inspirational source of empowering words that stimulate your spirit, renew your mind, and activate your purpose. Life's simple answer. Keep it simple. Such a short phrase can truly be an antonym, almost like kryptonite to the situations and circumstances that we find ourselves experiencing on a daily basis. God did not create us to be slaves to the negativity that surrounds us, nor is it his will we float helplessly in the midst of life's chaotic storms. No matter what circumstance or situation you may be in, I believe if you stop and apply stop to your problems, you can and will have the ability to keep it moving over life's dips and curves. What is stop, you may ask? Well, it's the acronym for serving God and others, trusting God, being obedient to his word, and praising God. Serving God, ask yourself, are my actions serving God's kingdom or serving his people? Does this circumstance that I'm going through give God glory in any way? Mark 10 tells us that for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life. So when we serve others, it not only glorifies God, but it helps us to divert from our own negative circumstances. We want to trust God. It does not matter what, when, why, or who. If you wholeheartedly trust in God, you will quiet your fears, strengthen your faith, and be victorious in every area of your life. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Oh, Be obedient to God. Not only does God command us to be obedient, but obedience will transform your old sinful nature into a holy, graceful living life, which will not only affect your life's journey, but it'll affect those around you and reflect God's light to those who are lost. And P, praise God. Each day we should remember who provided us salvation, who wakes us each day with new mercies, new opportunities, and gives thanks with all of our hearts. Praise quiets our sorrow and sadness and strife. Our praise exalts God in the highest of excellence, and God is worthy of our praises. Praise will empower you to rise above your current circumstances and give way to positive progress by the grace of God. So remember, fellow soldiers, next time you feel life's pressures, stop. Surrender yourself in service. Trust the Lord. Be obedient to his word and praise his holy name. Until next week, be empowered, be inspired to be a blessing. It's time to show some love and appreciation. Saturday, May 7th, from 4 to 7 p.m. at the W Event Center, 168 North McDonough Street, Jonesboro, Georgia. Through it all, a celebration of the lives of three great women from the community. Dr. Evelyn Wynn Dixon, Mayor of Riverdale, Georgia. Mrs. Emma Strapp, Mother of Bishop Donald Battle, Pastor of Divine Faith Ministries International. And Mrs. Roberta Abdul Salam, Community Advocate. These phenomenal women have shaped and changed the lives of countless in our community. And collectively, they represent the strength courage and foundation our families and communities are built upon don't miss the opportunity to show your support to an incredible group of women in an evening filled with love uplifting entertainment and delicious cuisine tickets are just $25 for more information contact Linda at 404-217-9486 Saturday May 7th 4pm at the W Event Center in Jonesboro, Georgia 
Come celebrate three women who achieved greatness through it all. Women Helping Women. That's the passion of Women to Women and Associates, a faith-based nonprofit 501c3 organization created for the complete advancement of all women, especially those in crisis from domestic violence, substance abuse, and homelessness. The primary purpose is to be the source of educational and informational empowerment to all women. Founder and CEO April Lanlan Sentmanot turned her pain into purpose. She overcame addiction and domestic violence with the love of Christ and now helps other women do the same. They create the perfect environment for the cycles of addiction, domestic violence and abuse, poverty, incarceration, and lack of education in the lives of all women to not only be broken, but to be renewed with spiritual health, positive emotional well-being, educational enrichment, employability standards, and personal parental programs to transform our clients to well-balanced, educated, spiritually sound members of the community. They are a place of hope, health, healing, and happiness for all women. For more information, contact the founder and CEO April Alain Sentmanot. Or go to www.womentowomenandassociates.net. Well, we are back here on the Clarion Call broadcast. Again, I'm your host, Minister Jonathan Simmons, and we thank God for those of you who are joining in on the AM dial 1570. We also thank God for those of you who are listening via all of the technology that's available in the world today. You can be online at wigoam.com. Or you also can find us broadcasting on the TuneIn radio application. It works on Android or on Apple devices. Put in WIGO 1570 in the search engine, or better yet, put in Clarion Call Show, and bingo, you'll find us broadcasting to you right here and now. You can follow me on social media at Minister J Sim. That's Minister J S I M M, and you can follow me and see what's going on. Well, uh, we're going to get to our inspirational moment of today. Um, topic that uh, hit me uh, as I was thinking about what I should uh, bring to you today was I was at church. I go to um, Greater Travelers Rest Baptist Church, and um, I'm not going to get into um, <laughs> some of the more controversial aspects of some of our church services. We'll, we'll do that at another time. I know those of you who are familiar with that, you might know it under the other name of House of Hope, and the pastor is E. Dewey Smith. And you know from time to time, uh, there's been YouTube posting and so forth that our pulpit <laughs> has some interesting things going on <laughs> outside of preaching. But like I said, again, today I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I will talk about that hopefully at another time. Today I want to talk about the pursuit of perfection, uh, the pursuit of perfection. And what I want to deal with is that, you know, sometimes in this Christian life, um, we— at least for me, we spend a lot of focus on doing the right thing. And certainly that's important. <laughs> uh, you, you want to you do what's right. You want to do what the Lord has commanded you to do. But I think uh, sometimes we get so caught up in the doing the right things, trying to be perfect, uh, never wanting to make a mistake, that sometimes what happens is we lose, we end up losing the passion you know, what put on my mind is, is that we must put more focus on passionately pursuing God and his purpose and promises and maybe a little bit less emphasis on being perfectly performing people. <laughs> now, let me give you a couple of examples of imperfect but very powerful people of God. Uh, and I, I'm borrowing this from a, a minister that comes on. Uh, this guy actually did this in the 90s. I don't even know if he's still alive. But a guy by the name I think is Les Feldick that does a tremendous teaching ministry. And he talked about, you know, sometimes how he was talking the marital context, context, how women often look for, you know, a particular, they expect the man of God to sometimes be perfect. And I think the man of God does the same thing. He looks for a woman and he expects to find this woman that is just this godly woman, but she looks like Beyonce and she cooks like, uh, you know, uh, Chef Sarah Ray. I mean, the bottom line is, that probably that person doesn't exist. Um, and so we need to look at, at being, looking at the God in the person. Let me give an example of an imperfect godly person, Abraham. Now, Abraham uh, was a man who, you know, God said was a man of faith, a man that he called his friend. Nevertheless, there was a, there was a section in the Bible where Abraham was traveling and came into a, uh, a city and he said to his wife, Sarah, hey, Sarah, do me a favor. Um, tell the people that you are my sister <laughs> because you look so good <laughs> that the people will see you and kill me to get to you. Moses, leader of the people of Israel, 
first of all, argued with God quite a while about being sent to Israel, and then later on almost got killed because he didn't circumcise his son in a timely fashion. Barak, the great general uh, in the time of Judges, where Deborah was a judge, uh, he was so afraid to go to war unless Deborah herself decided that she was going to go with him. Okay, Even though God told him to go, he said, I'm not going unless you go, Deborah. Isaiah, excuse me, Elijah, the great prophet, ran into a cave fearing for his life with just a verbal threat from Queen Jezebel after he had faced off against 400 false prophets and saw fire come down from heaven. Paul himself said in scripture, he said the things that he wanted to do, he didn't do. And the things that he didn't want to do, he ended up doing. He couldn't please the Lord at all times. Peter wouldn't even eat with Gentile Christians, which was against uh, the new dispensation of what Christ has said, that all being one in Christ. So we have to understand that sometimes in following the Lord, because we are human beings, we're not perfect. Well, we have a phone call here. We're going to go to the, to the phone lines right now. Carlos, uh, thanks for calling the show. How you doing, brother? Sam? Doing good, brother. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. I'm ecstatic right now because uh, my nephew just, we're not going to get all the information or let all the information out, but my nephew will be entering into the draft or be a part of the draft this weekend. Oh, praise the Lord, man. So, uh, you know, we... We, I wish you could have called me on Monday night on the sports show, but we're going to give you a shout-out anyway, bro, and just say, hey, it's going to be a very, very exciting time. And uh, we hope and pray, obviously, that he, uh, you know, stays free of injury and that the Lord will uh, keep him and bless him. And, of course, I know you covered him with mad prayer yourself. Amen and day. Listen, brother, uh, tell people how they can find out more about you and your music ministry that you have out there, because I know you are always, always on the grind for the Lord. I'm always on the ground for the Lord. You can reach me at www.twogrownmen.com. And, and the meaning of two grown men is that in Matthew 18 and 20, if two or more touch and agree and gather in Jesus' name, he shall be in the midst. Uh, you also get my music on iTunes. If you search uh, any search engine, just put in Carlos Grown Man Portal. Well, brother, we appreciate you, uh, and we thank you so much, man, and we look for uh, for good things coming from your nephew, and we hope and pray that uh, that he will be uh, entering the NFL uh, not too distant future. We'll be there. God bless you, brother. Yep. Yeah, that, that brother has a very powerful testimony um, in what the Lord has done from this guy. He's had a, a heart condition. Uh, he teamed up with another uh, young man who also had a heart condition. Unfortunately, the other brother did pass away uh, a couple of years ago. But these guys go out and they bring it to you uh, straight up, uh, kind of a urban Christian hip hop flavor, but very bold uh, in their stance for Christ. And they go around and you know bring you the music of God in a way that's a little bit different than what you are accustomed to in church. But they're outside in the world, and so uh, you know I can tell people it's about what Paul said. He said, "I became like." Not as like became like some to win a few. So we thank God for the ministry. But like you say again, it's that this is all part of the whole package about understanding that we we are not, you know, perfect people. We're going to have errors. We're going to make mistakes. But the key is really what God is looking for is your commitment. You know, how commitment are you and I to following Jesus regardless of cost? You know, are we really willing to give everything that we want to be up in exchange for being the person that God wants us to be, which in essence is eternally greater than anything that we can think. That's the question. If you, if you look here in the scriptures, I'm going to read for you out of uh, Hebrew, the 12th chapter verses two through 13 to kind of give you an idea of the importance of following the passion and following God's purpose versus necessarily having everything go right all the time. This is what it said about Jesus. It said, first of all, Paul tells us, wherefore, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so doth easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So what that's telling you, number one, that I don't care how saved, how Holy Ghost filled, how much you fast and pray, that sin is always lurking around. And from time to time, we fall prey to it. <laughs> But the Bible tells us, let's keep on running with patience, even though the road might be difficult. Maybe it might take some trip, uh, some turns and twists. And then it tells us in verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. 
you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. What Paul's saying is this, amen, following Christ is sometimes a very painful thing. And sometimes the very people who you are serving, the very people who you're close to, they're in some cases going to be become your worst enemies. And what the scripture are telling us is we need to shift our eyes away from other people, shift our eyes about from what's going on in the world and how this guy or that guy is not doing this, that, and the other thing. He seems to be successful or why this person over here is not going through drama. And instead it says looking unto Jesus. See, Jesus is the one who is our template. He's our example. He's our model. He's our role model. I know we get excited and we talk about athletes and and certainly we know that when people have a platform that, you know, they should conduct themselves in a certain way. But really our ultimate role model, our ultimate kind of go to person to look at if we want to get an idea on how we should conduct our lives really is Jesus. And it said that Jesus, what he did it to go through, what he went through on the cross is that he looked at the joy that was in front of the accomplished task. What's that joy that billions of people would be able to join him in heaven if he was able to go through the sacrifice, this painful, horrific death on the cross. And that's what he kept his focus on, the end and not the beginning and the middle. And that's what God is asking us to do, to focus on the dream of eternal life spent with Jesus Christ. To get our mind off of, of the rudimentary stuff that, that goes on day to day, you know, uh, what's happening on the job, what's happening in the family. Those things are important, but God is telling us, hey, you're going to have drama. That's that's part of life experience. It's not anything, you know, uh, that's unusual. Peter said, he said, don't be shocked when these fiery trials come upon you. He also tells you that what happens to the Christian is common to man. There's no difference. Not like God is allowing some other weird thing to happen to you. That doesn't happen to just everybody saved and unsaved. But what he's telling us is to keep our eye on him. And understand this when things are not going well. When things are jacked up, understand that oftentimes this is the time where God is closest to us. Okay, we may we may fail, make mistakes. We even may commit sins in our lives. The question is, what do we do when this happens? When this happens to us, do we run away from God or to him? Remember, God is near us and waiting for us to come to him. This is what the scripture says in Psalm uh, chapter 34 going verses 17 and 18. It says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such that be of a contrite spirit. What's that saying? That means that when things oftentimes in the life of the believer are at its worst, that's when God said, I'm at my best as far as my ability to get close to you, my ability to save you out of disaster, my ability to love you through the tough times. And verse 19 in that same section continues on, says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. So that means, hey, a lot of stuff may happen to you living right. I'm not talking about living bad, but the good news is the Lord delivers us out of all of our difficulties. And this is what it says in James, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God speaking, God resist the proud, but give grace unto the humble. What does that mean? You, you, we have to understand that walking with God oftentimes meaning putting our ego on the back burner. You can't always be about us. It can't be about us being the biggest, baddest cats on the block. That might be true, but at the end of the day, we have to learn how to humble ourselves. We have to learn how to wait on God for him to move us through these situations. We need to trust in Jesus. He's the one. Put all the problems on him. If there's somebody bothering you at work, let him know about it. I mean, believe me, I'm telling you, I'm a living witness. You hold your tongue, hold your peace. I mean, there's times where you have to speak to people and explain to them the rules of speaking with you. But as far as you taking your own vengeance, uh uh-uh, man, leave that alone. Let God handle that. It says vengeance is the Lord's. And most of all, when we are in trouble, go to the Lord. The reason why we want to go to Jesus is because he's different. The Bible says in Hebrew, for we don't have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us come, therefore, boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When you're not perfect, 
when you're not able to do everything the way God wants you to do, which sometimes we have fails, God is asking us to come to him, confess our faults to him, let him know, and be bold about it. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Come to that throne of grace, and he will give you the help that you need in time of need. Well, as always, our time has gone past very, very quickly. But we thank the Lord for those of you who have listened to us on WIGO and have watched us on Facebook Live. You know, we like to say each and every week, it's hump day, the middle of the week. But God has got good things in store for you yet. On behalf of everybody here at WIGO, I say God bless you and have a great day. the highest mountain Looked all around, couldn't find nobody Went down into the deepest valley Looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody I went across the deep blue sea Couldn't find one to compare To your grace, your love, your mercy Nobody greater, nobody greater than you Searched all over, couldn't find nobody I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody Nobody greater, nobody greater, no Nobody greater than you Searched all over